Hello, welcome to Parry Roubaix. Welcome to what is going to be, well, hopefully a very busy tech video because this is one of the races where they roll out some interesting bits and pieces. I've been coming to the race for over 10 years now and tech has definitely changed in that time. You used to see tubeless tyres from Dugast and FMB. They've all vanished. You used to see alloy rims with tied and soldered spokes and carbon rims that only just filtered through into the peloton. And there's plenty of endurance bikes so they could have the clearance of, well, 28 tyres back then. Now though, well, Bikes are pretty standard, but wheels are definitely different, tyre widths are definitely different because disc brakes have allowed you to go for them big wide tyres. So let's see if there's anything different going on this year. We've heard of rumours of gravel bikes and I've heard rumours of gravel wheels as well. Let's take a look. Alright, over here at Q3 6.5. Always believe this guy, always believe this guy, he's speaking the truth when it's about cycling. This guy knows what it's about. Tire pressure, what tire pressure are you using on the motorbike today? The motor actually, uh, yesterday I heard the motorbike, I don't know nothing about motorbike tire pressure, but they're actually lowering pressure in the fire tires as well. Usually it's about three bars and now it's like two or two and a half, something like that. I heard that. Do they, no they go nobly, so like, yeah, on, knobs yeah? on it. Yeah. Different bikes do they use like? Uh, dirt bikes or so. I no, no, no. It's because usually in the the, the the regular road races they use slick th not slick tires, but they use the same motorbikes because they're more and en enduro like. Yeah. Uh, and it's still the same bikes. They, they, they still work here, but they're pretty heavy. Do you it's get do you get beat heavy. up sat on the back of them or across the cobbles? Definitely. Do you feel it at the end of the day? Oh like? my god, yeah. Do you tape your fingers like the pros? No, no, <laughs> no, not that. There we are. Uh, less tech news there. <laughs> More uh, insider gossip news. Well, Spot now, on. so keep listening to this guy. He knows what he's talking about. Is a, is a clever man too. <laughs> Cheers. Okay, over here, as I was saying, at Q3 6.5, they are using tyre pressure of anywhere between 3.5 and 4.5, depending on rider's weight. They're also using 32 mil tyres on top of the cars. It looks like, well, they've got gravel bikes, but they're not using them. They're for the mechanics to be able to hop from sector to sector. So even they need um, technical assistance throughout this race. Get the brand in there, get the brand in there. Yeah, <laughs> get the branding there. Uh, team Viz Malaysia Bike is racing soloist bikes, which is a, let's say, the best of both worlds. You know, we have a climbing bike that you see a lot in the Tour de France, R5, which is very lightweight. And you have the aero bike that is used in most of the classics. That's a very fast bike, and the soloist is the bike that combines the two things. It's uh, it's not the, the, uh, 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 the most light bike in the world, but it's really f a little bit more forgiving so the riders have a little bit more control on the cobbles because if you have a very stiff bike you have the chance that you can really slip from the from the middle where you want to be in these in this race uh, to the side of the road where all the all the all the water and the and, and, and the bad pavement is and bad pavement is of course like in the middle it's not good but on the side it's really bad uh, and that's why we choose for the soloist of course we have a little bit wider tires normally you would race like 28 in like Tour of Flanders or 30 but here, here, here it's 32 the Vittorias so and then uh, we, we race uh, reserve wheels 4044 which are a little bit stronger than the lightweight climbing wheels um, so that's basically the setup some of the riders have a double handlebar tape but in, in principle it's a bike everybody could make uh, for himself to ride on, on uh, the, the terrain like, like this. Is it aero enough? Because obviously today there's not exactly a load of wind, but it could be a bit of a tailwind, couldn't it? Is it an aero enough bike for today? Or is, it, is there a trade-off? No, it's, it's, it's a trade-off. Uh, as I said, it's, 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 uh, it's the best of both worlds. In theory, like uh, the riders, the domestic riders do, who, who uh, could ride, uh, the guys who have to do it on the cobbles, uh, they could like, ride uh, the, the first 100k on the aero bike, but in the end everybody choose to, to use the soloist because they want to get as far in the race as possible. And then if you hit the first cobbles, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's challenging on the S5. I mean, there are pro riders, they can do it. But uh, the solo is, is, is the best choice, that's for sure. There is some names here that are iconic and some that are well, 
Well, yeah. Right, over here at Balwiles Team Flanders there on the Eddie Merckx frames, of course. And, and one with the very fetching Panasonic paint job on there, 525 model. What you'll notice with quite a few of the wildcard teams, the Pro Continental teams, is that they're using Ultegra on their bikes. You used to see that a lot more in the Pro Peloton at this race when they had sort of two different bikes, the Endurance Roubaix bike that they'd used and then their standard race bike throughout the year. But now with everybody using pretty much a standard race bike it's draw race SRAM well no cam campang no campagnolo across the board <laughs> and yes that 17 mil stem is still here if you've not seen the Ghent Revelgen video go and check that out oh, it's about the new bike that Christoph yep yep go on fire away yeah, we have a new uh, Dara bike for, for Christoph uh, for this season and we will hopefully have it for the whole uh, team for the Tour de France. It's a new uh, Aero bike we made with, uh, with Dara called VA, so we are, really, uh, we are really happy with that new one. Okay, what, how does it differ from last or this year's model? The big difference is uh, we put everything into aerodynamic, aerod make it more aerodynamic, that's, uh, that's all we made and uh, make it also stiffer for the sprinting so it's uh, we are happy and satisfied with it okay. so i'm guessing now with the development of the tire whips the, t the wheels themselves that's where the comfort's coming from in the yep. bikes for this yep. race yeah the tire make more comfort uh, more comfort especially with the width and also with, uh, with the, what you call the pressure we put in so that's actually where the comfort is on the frame we didn't put extra comfort on the frame EF got some mad bar tape going on on the bikes from Pro Logo. It looks very similar to the texture of some of the saddles that you get from Pro Logo as well. Bar that, it's the standard Lab 71 Super 6 bike. But if you want to have a look at a certain MVP's bike, Forget it, the crowd is mental, but I will link a video below because I checked it out at the recent E3 Saxo Classic, which he won. Israel Premier Tech, I'm sure you have seen that they're using the gravel bikes. Let's find out why. Because the other team that they sponsor, Human Powered Health on the women's side of the sport, were using the Ostro Vam yesterday. So it's interesting to see the men on the gravel bike. Why oh why? Uh, the team, the only ones on a gravel bike. What's what's the decision there then? So we want to introduce something new. It's uh, it's nice for us. The the riders really appreciate the, the bikes. They like them very much. So I think will be good for the team, good for the factor for everybody to to come to Rubé with the gravel bikes. They are more comfortable. They have a little bit uh, wider wheelbase, so it's more control on the bike. And also it's nice clearance for the, the big tires that we use for the cobbles. So we like the bike, so okay. it's nice. We see a lot of teams, or some riders, usually the big riders, start in the first 100k on an aero bike, on a standard road bike, and then maybe swapping over to a more endurance-based bike. Yeah. The guys are starting on this from the start, aren't they? Yeah. How, what's the aero properties of the bike like? Actually, to... the when they were riding, uh, the aero side of the bike with the same handlebar like a normal Ostra, it's uh, coming close to the numbers of the, the the road bike. So actually, they like the bike is not as stiff as the road bike, but it's still good for the first hundred case and then it's just advantage because if there is a full gas in front of the first cobblestones nobody will change the bike you lose more energy to change the bike than to just start with the gravel bike What's, how heavy is it for the full build it's not that much different uh, we are talking about 200 grams of difference so for us it's still in range for the flat stage of Rubea I found the Holy Grail over here at Bingola. They're using the Elite Q seat bottle cage, a bottle cage that was used for decades, went out of fashion, and well, the Belgian team are keeping it alive. We salute you.
noticeable is the amount of riders using one piece bar and stem usually they're a little bit too stiff or have previously have been a little bit too stiff and it's why we used to see yeah standard alloy stem with maybe a carbon or an alloy bar usually an alloy bar because if you come down on a, on Roubaix well it could be a little bit worrying so yeah real interesting to see full piece one carbon bars and stem all over the spot tire pressure let us in on the secrets our tire pressure is perfect. Yeah, what is it though? They're all different. All right, tell yeah, us, tell us two or three. Two or three. He's, he's awkward, isn't he? He always awkward. Oh, it goes on the riders' <laughs> way. They sort of vary between three point five and and four point five. I'm guessing they've recon the course plenty of times. Know exactly what they want. Because this is a long day. You've still got a hundred kilometres before the first pave, so they go a fraction higher and then. Hopefully it's right when they get there. Right, it used to be a, a, closely, a closely guarded secret, tire pressure over the past couple of years, but everybody seems to be a bit more open with the information. Why is that, do you reckon? Well, everyone's more or less writing the same thing now, basically. You know, like, okay, different brands, but uh, that may be a, a bit different, but, but if you're riding the same tire sponsor as other teams, you're more or less within a really small window of, of what the tire pressure will be. Tire width? 30 mil. Insert. Yes. I am gonna have to dash. It's rollout time here, but one last little bit. Quick step. I using gravel tyres on the rear, the Terra, a couple on the front, but usually it's the Roval CLX, SLX. I flashed the pictures up here, and they're using the Mondo tyres. Interesting little setup. Oh, and check out that. If they get a puncher and they're miles away from a team car, they can easily whip the wheel out. Little uh, Allen key tied to the seat post right i've got a bus to catch q3 6.5 are taking me to the finish so that is it from tech from the start line i hope you've enjoyed it i hope it's been interesting few little interesting bits and bobs there join us in the comments below if you're watching on youtube if not hit us up via the socials and as always thank you for watching and enjoy your riding